Welcome to the Biobalance HealthCast, episode number 470, The Distinctions Between Vasoconstrictors and Vasodilators. Biobalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at Biobalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Many men, as they age, start to suffer with issues of having or maintaining a sufficiently workable erection. And that really causes concerns for them about their ability to continue to have sexual relationships, to still be a man, uh, to be healthy, uh, and they want to do something about it. And so what regularly happens is they go to their physician and they say, I'm starting to have trouble in this area. And the physician says, oh, let, well, let me give you this little pill. I got this pill that will help you have an erection and it'll work just fine. And they give them a pill. We have learned over the last couple of years attending different medical conferences that study these issues that that actually is an early warning uh, sign that you and your doctor should know of potential heart disease five years down the road. So you should not just dismiss the concern with a little blue pill, even though the little blue pill may help you have an erection. And so then looking at the topic of erections and how to get them, how to keep them, how to, how to be content with them, we started doing some research and we have identified nine different lifestyle choices and issues that you and your doctor both should be aware of about the way you live your life in order to determine whether erectile dysfunction issues as a, as a function of aging are caused by uh, cardiovascular problems in the offing or if they're caused by something else. And so today we want to talk about the other things and nine other things that you should be aware of that have to do with it. And, and the first of those things is whether you are uh, ingesting into your physiology mm-hmm. vasodilators or vasoconstrictors. Dilators open the blood vessels, constrictors contract them and, and reduce the blood flow. In order for your erection to function, you have to have a vasodilator that expands the blood flow in your scrotum, in your penis. Otherwise, you can't have an erection. You normally have your own vasodilators. Your body makes it. You don't have to ingest a vasodilator just for that to happen. Okay. Yet, if you're taking a vasoconstrictor, it will stop you from having an ex. What your body naturally does. Right. So. So vasoconstrictors are over-the-counter drugs, sometimes medications your doctors give you because of a certain problem that you have, but they don't really think about ED. That, that's not connected in their head because they're trying to fix a problem. Right. They're not going, oh, that might cause ED. Although most of us and most men would think, oh, they should think about that. But <laughs> That's but a real that's, problem. But yeah. that's Heart not, attack. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's not what we were taught in medical school. We were taught save a life, make people healthier by not having heart attacks or not having right. uh, or not being obese. Some of these things are steps in making you healthier, but they not, may not make you happier. So one of the things that um, we know, I ask, and we, we study these by, by going to all these conferences, but I use these every day in our mm-hmm. practice. I ask different, I ask about what medications people are on, how much caffeine they have, how much, how much alcohol they have, because those may be the sources of their ED and not just low testosterone. I don't want to treat the wrong thing. Right. So the list of vasoconstrictors so are the, So constrictors include, are the ones you, you don't want in terms of getting a good erection. Right. If you're taking vasoconstrictors either as an over-the-counter medicine or caffeine drinks or, mm-hmm. or something of that sort – that will negatively impact your ability to have an erection. That's right. And there's right. there's uh, lots of caffeine drinks that are at the gym because I see them. Right. Uh, Monster's one of them that people use to get energy. Well, that's, there's so much caffeine in that. It can give you an arrhythmia, but it also is a great vasoconstrictor, and that alone can cause you to have ED. So 
if you're drinking these high caffeinated energy drinks, mm-hmm. that's the biggest cause of ED, especially in young men. Well, that's what I was just going to say. My my impression with no information at all is that that's typically a younger person's thing to do. But, but I have men who are 60 and 70 that think they're young. Or that want to be <laughs> I mean, young. Or be that cool. want to be young and they, yeah. or their son uses it and they want to use it. And they think that makes them happier, healthier, more energetic. It also can give you a heart attack because it can give you so much caffeine that your heart will have an arrhythmia. So uh-huh. it's not a great idea as you get older. It's not a great idea when you're younger. It's not a very healthy thing to do. But caffeine is one of our biggest So how much is too much? Problem. Do you know? Is there, well, the, I know the everybody's monster metabolism drinks have varies. 360 uh, milligrams in one can. Okay. And I had, I had a gentleman who I worked up completely. He actually did have a low uh, testosterone level. So I did treat him with testosterone and nothing got better. So he brought his wife in with him on the third visit and said, anything that you've seen in his, in, in his drug can- or medical medicine cabinet or, or anything you've noticed that could be a problem? And she said, he works for blank, a soda company, and he drinks, well, I don't even know who makes Monster, but he, he drinks um, six to eight of those a day. Well, that's 320 milligrams of caffeine, and I think a cup of coffee is 60. So that's a huge amount of caffeine, and he does it all day long. So it also dehydrates you. So dehydration, it basically vasoconstricts you too. So I always tell men that they need to drink water throughout the day and not use a diuretic or not take too much caffeine because that's going to lower, it, it kind of like decreases the fluid in their tank so they don't have enough blood to go into their penis. Mm-hmm. So let's run through the okay. list of uh, vasoconstrictors that, you that you've identified. <laughs> and, and then when you want to expound on one okay. of them, interrupt me. But caffeine you've covered. Nicotine is another one. Mm-hmm. If people are smoking cigars, pipes, cigarettes. Or chewing. Or chewing nicotine gum, uh, whatever. Or chewing chew, which yeah. I didn't even know about until I was or a chew doctor tobacco. Yeah. at Young Life Camp and... All huh. these kids from the South were doing chew, both men and women. And I'm oh, like, yeah. what is this? I didn't know about it. And this I taught is considered the high North. school for a number of years. And the high school students, uh, the guys in particular, would chew tobacco. And you see those little rings in their hip pocket that mm-hmm. meant they were carrying around a, a thing of tobacco. So that causes uh, ED. I mean, obviously, if you're 18, you probably have enough blood flow and you have enough ability to overcome that. But not if you're 30 or 40. Yeah. So okay. that's that's one of the biggies. Sudafed and Sudafedrin, cold medications, antihistamines, mm-hmm. asthma medications, and inhalers. Inhalers for any kind of an inhaler. For inhalers any- usually have, well, they usually have vasoconstrictors in them as a drug, or they have uh, cortisone, which also can cause. Actually, you're trying to help your lung dilate the dilate the bronchial tubes, but it also vasoconstricts other things. Okay. Um, Methylphenidate? Yeah, that's a diet pill and, a, and an ADD medicine. So you might be on that ADD medicine and go, I can't figure out why I'm having erectile problems. Yeah. Until someone asks you, did they start when you started this drug? Yeah. And then just changing that drug or seeing if you can go to something else. Well, and, and a lot of people who are on ADD medicines can take one for a period of time and then all of a sudden develop problems with taking it, like mm-hmm. heart problems or. or uh, other kinds of concerns. Do these tend to saturate, and then then maybe you could no, have that, that issue? No, just that they get older, and other things cause their vessels to be more reactive, or they're taking another drug, and it's it, and it has a bigger impact on their vessels. Okay, so, so it's not like a lifetime level of no uh, Adderall it do, that you It doesn't could take. do that because some people okay. take it for a lifetime for ADD since they're children, All right. and that doesn't seem to happen. Diet pills and over the counter prescriptions, uh, all, all over the counter drugs. All over-the-counter diet pills, which are usually caffeine. Oh, so and yeah. and diet pills are um, amphetamines. So any kind of amphetamine is going to be vasoconstrict your blood vessels, mm-hmm. and that doesn't mean you shouldn't take them necessarily for whatever n- need you have. That's given to you by a doctor, of course. Uh, but it means that you should go with the lowest dose and time it, time any of these medications, so that it's at the opposite end of the day from when you want to have sex. Okay. So if you're going to take a, an ADD medicine or a diet pill, take it in the morning and have sex in the, at night. Yeah. And then it will have decreased its blood level. Right. 
So, so that's something that people should think about. Yeah, I, a lot of I the, tell the ADD uh, medicines are four-hour terms, mm -hmm. and you take it twice a day, or it's an eight-hour extended release, but by the end of the day, it's gone, mm -hmm. and you're not having the effect from it anymore. Right, right. Okay. Uh, cocaine. Cocaine's a vasoconstrictor big time, and so lots of people say it increases your... I don't, honestly, I don't know a lot about illicit drugs. We weren't taught that in medical school. I don't have... I don't have a huge grasp of this, but I do know what the cocaine is. And it does stimulate your sex drive, but it decreases your ability to perform. <laughs> what a paradox. Which is a big problem. Yeah. You know, it makes very for a lot of frustration. Yes. So. Uh, epinephrine and adrenaline. So that would be like an EpiPen. Mm -hmm. If you had to take one of those, then mm -hmm. that could cause a problem. But yeah. it would wear off. I it mean, it's just off. like taking the ADD pill mm -hmm. if you wait. It's the same if, type if of can medication. Wait. Okay. Uh, adrenal supplements? Yeah, a lot of people take adrenal supplements because they think that they have adrenal fatigue when they really don't. And so they get too much adre ad adrenaline and and uh, cortisol and all the things that the adrenal make. It's usually just ground up adrenal. And at a high dose, that would be a problematic. So when, when you are in a flight or fight situation, your body floods with adrenaline to prepare you to survive a crisis. You it don't have sex down. then. No, you're not. You're not so having your sex then. your body was But made. it shuts down like your digestive process and moves yeah. all the blood flow into your upper into body, your heart, and your lungs, into your muscles. And, yeah, that's exactly what it was meant to do. Right. Fight or flight. The adrenal was meant to shut down all the ancillary things that your body does, mm -hmm. but make sure that you have enough blood to the areas your brain, your muscles, your heart, so that you can run. So that so yeah. So most of the time. Shutting down your ability to have sex is a good thing because it'll save your life. And, and when you're in a uh, life-threatening crisis, you don't have time to stop and have sex. Right. Yeah. Most people. <laughs> yeah. Most people. Oh, wait just one minute. Don't shoot me yet. <laughs> I'm not through. Uh, this next word I don't know how to say. Do you, do you see it? Phenyl? Phenyl, phenyl uh, ephrine, and that's another uh, form cold of pill, All cold right. type of pill. Dopamine is what we give to people with Parkinson's, and that's something that can decrease your your ability to have sex. Have an erection. Mm -hmm. But Parkinson's can make you hypersexual. Really? So that would, I mean, libido-wise. So actually restore the balance somewhat. Yeah. All right. Uh, angiotensin, are those blood pressure drugs? Mm -hmm. Okay. But, and, yes, angiotensin is something we give to give make people's blood pressure go back up. Atherosclerosis, is that something that you take or just something that happens to your body? That's a condition with aging and high lipids and a lot of inflammation. Mm -hmm. in, in many people, their blood vessels get really small. So what you know what happens if you take a, uh, take a hose and you squeeze on it, then that's how, that's how we get... Well, blows out the other yeah. end and so right. your heart... Yeah. Right. So, so uh, basically, atherosclerosis is going to decrease the blood flow to your penis as well. Mm -hmm. it, it's... It's high pressure, but then it's a really small amount. Mm -hmm. You need a lot of blood to actually get a good erection. If you think about it, that's what's going into your penis that gives you an erection. If you think that it's something else, it's not muscle, it's blood. So mm -hmm. you need to get the blood there. Okay. And then high blood pressure? High blood pressure usually is from a, a really constricted blood vessel. Mm-hmm. That causes the pressure to go up. So there are two kinds that they're concerned about. One is when your heart pumps and forces the blood to throw through your veins. And the other is when it's resting. And what is the, the tensile pressure of the blood that's in your veins? It's not being moved at that moment. It's more, it's, it's more problematic to have an, basically the median pressure that's going through your body most of the time to, right. be, to be high because that shrinks your blood vessels. Okay. I mean, basically it constricts them. Yeah. Okay. And then chronic stress. Right. Chronic and again, it's like an adrenal response. Mm -hmm. Chronic stress causes your body to tighten up and be ready mm -hmm. to Have epinephrine react. always running, and yeah. that constricts your blood vessels. So those are the things that impair erections. And those are things that you could be consuming in your diet that your doctor might not know about, like too much green tea or too, monster drinks or power bars or, or take, things like that. Or taking drugs over Caffeine. the counter for colds. You don't even know. Right. So if you have... Um, or cocaine. If, yeah. You know, I, and so ideally you would... Well, amphetamines, any kind of amphetamine, mm -hmm. um, meth, meth, meth is amphetamines. I mean, all of those things can cause you to have trouble having an erection. Yeah. So you choose drugs, erection, you know. Yeah. 
It's, that's that's kind of the choice, but nobody thinks of it that way. Right. That's that's not. <laughs> so so the flip side then, if you're not so much focused on vasoconstrictors, then there are vasodilators which expand the blood vessels so that you get better blood flow, more blood flow. So I I, I look at these as common ways to treat ED if you have atherosclerosis, if you have some things that you can't really fix on your own, then there are some things that you can, some medicines you can take and some things you can do and some supplements you can take to actually get the vessels to dilate more. So like if you, we just talked about high blood pressure or mm -hmm. chronic stress, if those tend to be constrictive, there are some things that you could take outside of blood pressure medicine per se. There are mm -hmm. things that you could do like uh, nitric oxide or Neo40. Neo40 is a supplement that uh, gives your body all over more nitric oxide. It's the same substance that Viagra gives you. It's not as it's not as short-lived and it's not as intense as Viagra. It just gives you better vasodilation throughout your body so that you can have sex, but also so you can think better, so that you get more blood flow to your muscles. So high blood pressure and other atherosclerosis is making your blood vessels constricted and small. The, the volume that can go through there is small, so that it's healthier to be able to dilate your blood vessels. Okay. And this is helping you dilate. And this is a levels. step that you could take whether you're on blood pressure medicines or mm -hmm. not. It may be one that you could take as a precursor to deciding that you need blood pressure medicines. Or it you can take you. it to get your blood pressure medicine dosed down. Reduce it. All right. But in the end, you could take it so that you have better erections. Yes. If you're having trouble. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, we look at these things. We use them before or after testosterone. So oftentimes we'll see low testosterone. We'll treat it. But then we still have trouble. Mm -hmm. Now, I've already ruled out all the medicines that could cause this and change them or had their primary change them. But then I offer them other things to make it better or okay. last longer. All right. So then let's, the run through, let's run through that okay. list. So we've already mentioned nitric oxide. Then there are the classically called little blue pills, but they're not all. They're Viagra, Cialis, yeah. Levitra. All of those are uh, nitric oxide. Basically, they give you more nitric oxide in a burst for s several hours. Right. So you have enough blood flow for that period of time. Well, and some of them you can take any time and several hours later mm -hmm. still have the effect of them. That's right. Cialis can be daily. Mm -hmm. It's a lower dose, but mm -hmm. it has to build up. Mm -hmm. And then you can take it daily so that you have a better va a vascular and, and some of those pelvis. you need to take it within a half hour of wanting to have sex. Mm -hmm. So you need to know which one your doctor is prescribing for. And they're all prescription? Then the, that's prescription. Okay. Uh, magnesium supplements. That's not prescription. And you can take that. That lowers your, lowers your blood pressure, dilates your blood vessels, helps your muscles not get crampy, you know, after exercise. So it's something that is, is a, a vasodilator. Mm -hmm. It's not as good as... Viagra or as good as Neo40, but it is something that you could take all the time just to give your body enough magnesium for all of the chemical um, and enzymatic activities of your body. You need magnesium. Okay. So it would help lower your blood pressure as well. So Is, is magnesium like an electrolyte? I mean, mm -hmm. there's a certain amount you have to have in your body for your body to just Mag work? Magnesium balances calcium. So if you're taking calcium, you should also be taking magnesium. Okay. And calcium is two to one, one magnesium, two calcium. Okay. So basically on the dosage, it should be, you should be taking those two balanced. All right. L-arginine <clears throat> and or orinothine? Ornithine. Those are two amino acids. They're a supplement. Um, they actually help erections. They help ejaculation. They help uh, orgasms in both men and women. So we usually suggest just taking these two amino acids together actually helps those things. So we suggest that in those cases. So get, getting to a certain age and having erectile dysfunction issues, blood pressure issues, what have you, you may have a testosterone problem. Mm -hmm. You can fix the testosterone problem, mm -hmm. which increases the libido mm -hmm. and helps with an erection, but mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily do anything about orgasms. You may right. still have difficulty mm -hmm. finishing. Right. And so something like this as a supplement would be able to help you with that? Would help you with that and the volume of the ejaculate. You know, not, I mean, I really, until I started getting into this, I didn't realize how important that is to men. 
And it is very important so that they produce an ejaculate that is has some kind of volume to it that isn't just dry. Uh-huh. And this helps with that. Huh. Diaz oxide? That's a vasodilator that just, we use in okay. it's a medication and minoxidil you use Minoxidil you, know, you do for like baldness? Yeah, but it's a blood pressure medicine. Huh. And it's a vasodilator, which is great. You just don't want to So the the rule with blood pressure is you want to get it to normal. That's when you can have good erections. You don't want it too high and you don't want it too low. Because too low, the pump doesn't get enough blood flow to the pelvis. So you don't you don't want a hundred over sixty. You know, you want a one twenty over seventy. You don't you you want to be in between, right at the kind of sweet spot, for you to have normal normal sex. Okay. Now these next two you're going to have to help me with. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm going to have to help myself with those because I this is um, anti seizure anti seizure medicines. Yeah. There's a lot of anti seizure medicines that can dilate blood vessels as well. All right. And that's, I mean, basically you have to look at the, the effects so and the side effects. maybe not for your... the primary purpose of, of seizure resistance, but just for better blood flow. Right. But in general, if you're on these, they would help you. But I don't think anyone would put you on these anti-seizure just for medicines ED just problems. for that. Okay. Nitroglycerin. Uh-huh. Most of the time we don't use that for just ED either. Uh, yeah, I remember people used to use that to, uh, I don't know if they still do, but to avoid a heart attack. If they thought well, yeah, that's what you use it for. Okay. So nitroglycerin is usually used to dilate the blood vessels around your heart that feeds your heart. So we think of the heart as a muscle, and when we say heart disease, it's not the muscle that's the problem. It's the vessels that feed the muscle. So I always thought of nitroglycerin as like an explosive substance, like it they is. used to put in TNT and stuff. It is. But this is a tiny, tiny amount that and they use. It blows up your blood vessels. To, except, yeah, they yeah. just dilates your blood vessels yeah. really quickly. Yeah. So if you're having a heart attack and you Can take surge that, and clear blockage. it takes the vessel and it opens it up around the heart so that you get oxygen to your heart. Yeah. So it's... It prevents damage to the it muscle. It prevents damage and it prevents you... That's basically what a heart attack does is the blood vessel gets plugged, no oxygen goes to the muscle, the muscle dies. Yeah. Not all of it, but usually pieces of it. And then it can't pump. So then exercise. Yeah. And when you say that, you're not talking about exercise by way of masturbation. You're talking about exercise for the whole body. (laughs) You'll think you would think that. No. (laughs) Believe me, guys will think that. (laughs) I'm talking about aerobic exercise at the gym. Okay. Okay. All right. Unless you're doing that at the gym. And then deep breathing and yoga. Yeah. That and, actually, and deep breathing can actually help with yeah. that. Reduce the stress, calm your body down. And dilate and blood vessels. Improve your blood pressure. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> Amazingly, it does. So so what we've gotten to today are the distinctions between vasoconstrictors and vasodilators. We want you to come back next week when we finish the conversation and go through the nine lifestyle habits that can cause ED problems uh, that, that are impacted by either the presence of vasoconstrictors in your life and can be resolved by the presence of vasodilators. So please come back next week as we continue this conversation. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.